Hi everyone. So it's been a little while since I've done a news update. I'm going to stick just to the last month, so we're not here forever. But I wanted to let you know I'm going to have a special announcement in the middle of the video. And also I've saved my favorite news announcement for the last one. So stick around. And I do apologize if you hear any kind of strange noise in the background today. It is pouring rain. Unfortunately, I can't control the weather on the days that I record. So we're just going to have to roll with it. So the first discovery was actually one that was just announced yesterday at the site of Abu Sir, the Czech mission working there under the direction of uh, Miroslav Barda, found an Old Kingdom tomb from the 5th dynasty that belonged to a man named Kairis. And it's particularly an interesting find because it tells us a lot about Kairis' status. He has some unusual features in his tomb. So for example, he actually has basalt, which is a volcanic rock, not the easiest to find and very hard to work. Um, it's, it's a very hard stone and he has paving in his tomb made out of basalt, which usually is reserved only for kings. So it tells us a lot about the status of Kairis. Now his tomb was actually looted in antiquity, so the preservation is certainly not perfect, but we did get a nicely preserved statue and part of his sarcophagus that survived. And these tell us a bit about Kairis' career. Now he did have a really extensive long list of titles, so I'm not going to go into all of them here or we'd be here for a long time and you, quite frankly you'd glaze over. But suffice it to say that he was at the top of the administration and had titles like overseer of all of the king's works, which means that he basically was in charge of all of the king's building projects, including his pyramid. So definitely part of, you know, using a common term today, part of the 1% at the time. So that special announcement I told you about, I want to let you know that I have a brand new, totally free guide to getting started with hieroglyphs. In about a half hour, it'll take you from knowing nothing about hieroglyphs or maybe knowing a little bit to understanding the basics of how the whole writing system worked and being able to write your own name in hieroglyphs or other people's names. And this goes way beyond the usual charts you see online, but yet it's still be able to be done in a short amount of time and is easy to work with. So you can go pick that up at voicesofancientegypt.com slash glyphs. All right, so moving on to Tel El Samara in the Delta. About a month ago, announcements were made that they found a really interesting Neolithic site here. So this site actually from the remains, uh, there's various animal and plant remains that have been found here that are being analyzed to see how people were living at the time. But it does show us one of the very earliest settlements, that is places where people actually settled down and lived in the Delta. It dates all the way back to the fifth millennium BC. That's the 4000s BC, by the way. And the only other site that sort of rivals this in terms of age and levels of fines is the site of Sais in the Delta. Occupation here also continued at least until the second dynasty of the Pharaonic era. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this in the future. Now on a sad note, unfortunately, also about a month ago at the beginning of September, a large, enormous fire really uh, engulfed the building of the National Museum of Brazil in Rio de Janeiro. Unfortunately, it's feared that this may be a complete loss, but they are still investigating and basically excavating the remains of the building to see what can be salvaged and what artifacts might have survived. Among the millions of items that are feared lost were over 500 Egyptian artifacts. Now moving back to Egypt and down south to the site of Komombo. You may have heard that there was a sphinx found at this site. It made a fair amount of press over the last month. But the main uh, thing is that there are actually a number of discoveries that have been made here. And this is because there's a problem with the high water table at the site that's basically eating away at this Ptolemaic temple that's here as well as other remains. And so there's a project ongoing to give modern drainage to the site and preserve the temple and other monuments. But in the process of this work of installing this drainage, they found a number of things, including a bust of the Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius, an old kingdom period pottery workshop, um, charred grain that they can analyze, and also just recently during the summer, they found two uh, stele from the Ptolemaic pharaoh Ptolemy V. 
and then most recently that sphinx that you may have heard about. Now the sphinx is actually rather small coming in at under two feet in height but it's really well preserved and of course would have been a powerful guardian for the temple during ancient times. So moving a little further south down to Aswan, a recent Egyptian mission to the site around the Aga Khan mausoleum at Aswan discovered a couple of late period tombs with a number of mummies in them, including one really well preserved mummy in a very nice sandstone sarcophagus. Unfortunately, the sarcophagus is not inscribed, so we don't know much about who this individual was, but excavations of course will continue as well as analysis of the finds. The other mummies that were found there were kind of put in haphazardly um, and not as nicely interred as this one. Other discoveries at this site include some interesting tomb paintings, such as this one, and a number of amulets and things that were attached to mummy wrappings, such as these ones that have the four sons of Horus, eyes of Horus, and a, and a winged sun, um, or rather a winged scarab. So let's move back north to the site of Mitrahina, which is basically around where the ancient capital city of Memphis was. And an Egyptian archeological mission working there uncovered a house dating to the Roman period, which is quite large. And it measures about 16 by 15 or so meters. You can see sort of what remains of it here. But one of the more interesting things about it actually is that attached to the Southwestern side of it was a Roman bath complex, including um, baths like this, but also uh, basins and offering tables that were believed to be used during religious rituals, uh, usually probably revolving around purification since it's a bath. Uh, but part of the reason why the excavators think this is that some of these items have depictions of the Egyptian god Bess on them. All right, so on to our final and my favorite discovery of the set, moving back north um, or just a little south rather, of Mitrahina is the site of Lisht. And just recently, the joint Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities and University of Alabama Birmingham mission to Lisht announced their completion of their documentation and mapping of a cemetery site there. Now, this may not sound super exciting, but this was a really big feat because we're talking about over 800 tombs that they uh, mapped and documented at the site. And they've actually found a number of interesting uh, features and finds in this process of this work. The site was unfortunately looted uh, starting around the economic downturn around 2009 and continued on through the revolution and a little while after. This was first documented in 2014 by Sarah Parkak of the University of Birmingham, who uses satellite imagery to uncover uh, ancient settlements, as well as also to track looting. So with these satellite images, she was able to show pits as they appeared over time through these satellite images, and you could see them increasing from 2009 on. Since then, the mission that she co-directs with Adel Okasha, who is director of the Central Department of Antiquities of Cairo and Giza, has been documenting and preserving what was already excavated basically by the looters. And during the work, they've discovered and excavated the tomb of Intef, which had some really beautiful finds like you can see here. Intef was a treasurer under the king Senwazirut I during the early 12th dynasty or Middle Kingdom. This cemetery site at Lisht is a predominantly you know, Middle Kingdom site. Now, an interesting feature that the team noted that I, personally is very in, interesting to myself, that is, may not be everybody's cup of tea, is that they noted that a lot of the tombs here are actually rather extensive family tombs. They have this kind of haphazard, rabbit worn kind of layout. Uh, and they may have up to eight different separate areas for people's burials. They think that they were used over generations and also potentially for extended family. And the reason I find this particularly interesting is that most of the high level elite tombs that we read about or hear about for the Middle Kingdom only have burials of a couple of individuals. They don't have these really extensive large family tombs. Um, you know, they tend to have one or two or three shafts and only, you know, one barrel each kind of thing. So this is particularly interesting. And it's really exciting that now that they finish the documentation, they're going to proceed next season with new excavations at the site. So I'm really excited to see what they're going to uncover with that. All right, so that's it for the news today, guys. Go over to voicesofancientegypt.com slash glyphs to pick up your free guide to hieroglyphs. And I'll be back in a couple of weeks with all of the latest news. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.